Okay, we'll come to what is now the key idea that makes algebraic topology work, that of homotopy. And specifically, there are many versions of homotopy, all of which are very important. But uh, for us, what we we'll look at next is the homotopy of paths fixing endpoints. So let's take a picture here. So let me take a surface like this. And I take a pair of endpoints. Maybe I have P here and I have Q here. They could be the same also. And let's take some curves between them. Here is a dark blue one. And here is a purple one. Maybe it wiggles, wobbles and goes from here to here. And let's look at an orange one, which also wiggles, wobbles and then goes from here to here. Now you can see that in some sense, the first two curves are equivalent to each other. That is, I can deform one onto the other within the surface, while I cannot deform the third one into either of them. And this is what is captured by the notion of uh, homotopy. <coughs> in this case, we have to fix endpoints because if we don't fix endpoints, we can just collapse a path and move it around and then re-expand it. But that said, what we want to do is capture this notion and really you can think of this as just a path of paths. Okay, so you could just define homotopy as a path of paths. It's very good in many contexts, but this will involve defining the topology on the space of paths. So one can finesse this, that is a somewhat more uh, difficult and technical issue, by looking at homotopies instead in the following way. So we look at homotopy as a function h which will map 0 1 cross 0 1 to the space x we want and we'll have certain conditions on this so this is going to be our s and this is t which you can think of as time or the family so this is along the path and this is across paths okay and what are the conditions between these two so suppose i call my first path alpha and i call my second path beta Okay, so we say that H is a homotopy and again I should emphasize fixing endpoints from what was the first path called alpha to beta if so this is of course continuous any function we specify is going to be continuous unless we are explicitly say it need not be. So with, with what are the conditions here? So first of all, at time zero, whatever the position is, so this has to be alpha of s. And at time one, it has to be beta. And as I said, it fixes endpoints. Now there are a couple of ways to do it. I could a priori fix p and q and say we are looking at things paths between p and q but I prefer to say instead that the functions which will be the left end point function which is t mapping to h of 0 t and t mapping to h of 1 t this is the right end point functions so remember here we have a square 0t is this guy and 1t is this guy. So this guy is supposed to be alpha, this guy is supposed to be beta. What we need to say is that these side things are constant. So this is a homotopy fixing endpoints. Okay. And we'll say alpha is homotopic to beta fixing endpoints if there exists h as above. Okay. So this is the precise definition. We say two things are homotopic. If there is an H, that H is called a homotopy. It's a path of paths, but we have avoided trying to have a topology on the path space by simply thinking of it as a function of two variables. That will let things happen quite easily. So tilde gives equivalence relations for us. That's the main result we want to see. And it gives two kinds of equivalence relations. Yeah, so it gives equivalence relations on paths. All paths, if I look at omega of x, 
we have a t equivalence relation or if we fix p and q between x and y and I just look at parts that start at p and end at q then I get an equivalence relation on this so we can look at tilde on all of these and tilde on those when I have a priori fixed p and q and it gives equivalence relations okay so what we have to show is as usual reflexive So here I have to show alpha is equivalent to alpha. Now this is really similar to the previous one. So I, what I need is a constant path from alpha to alpha. Now alpha is the same endpoints as alpha. So here I can simply take h of s comma t as being alpha of s. Ignore t, it's constant in t. Okay. Uh, so that's clear. So we have a box here which at each height, this is alpha, this is alpha, we simply take it to be alpha here. Okay. Symmetric is very similar to the previous symmetric. There we flipped it, but this time we flip it in the uh, vertical axis because so if alpha is equivalent to beta, so it implies we have an H, okay, which will go from S alpha to uh, H from zero one cross zero one to X, such that. I'm going to drop the fixed endpoint condition here. I'll just write h of s comma zero is alpha of s, and h of s comma one is beta of s, and we'll just define h bar of s t is going to be s. Uh, sorry, not s of h of s and 1 minus t. So what I've done is flipped along the vertical axis and you can see that it's actually a homotopy from <gasps> beta to alpha because now at time 0 it's going to be beta, at time 1 it's going to be alpha and it still fixes endpoints. Okay, So these are uh, straightforward. How about transitive? Transitive again is going to be quite similar to transitivity for uh, the connected components that we had. Namely, we have something like a star operation. So suppose we have alpha is homotopic to beta and we have beta homotopic to uh, gamma. Okay, So let H1, H2 be the homotopies, be the homotopies and obvious which one I mean. So we define, well, let's call it H I'll just draw a picture first and then we'll write a formal definition. So it's going to be H1 below, which goes from alpha to beta, and above that is going to be H2, which goes from beta to gamma. Okay, so this is going to be H of ST is going to be almost the same as last time, but the scaling is going to be in Y. H1 of S to T, if 0 is less than or equal to T is less than or equal to half, and H2 of s and 2t minus 1 if uh, half is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 1. Again, these are defined on closed sets. They coincide on the boundary because both of them are betas. Okay, So this together will tell you that we have this. So we get an equivalence relation and what we look at are the spaces which we'll uh, call pi usually. So pi 1, let's call it pi 1 of x semicolon uh, pq is omega of x semicolon pq till there. Okay, so this was easy, but this is crucial. So one thing that is clear is that we just had too many parts, but this drastically reduces the number of parts. So you can get a really nice algebraic structure. I mean, groups like integers or even finite groups and so on. Uh, while there is no chance of that, if we're really looking at all parts, we get giant objects. And um, But more importantly, as we'll see, this repairs the problem with the group operations. And that is what will be our next step, which will take a little bit of work.